Thank you. The final item of business is a member's business debate on motion 12252 in the name of Ruth Maguire on the Citizen Girl Initiative. And this debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Can I ask those members who wish to speak in the debate to press their request to speak buttons now? And I call on Ruth Maguire to open the debate. Ms Maguire, please. Presiding officer, it's a pleasure to have time in the chamber this evening to debate Girl Guiding Scotland and Women 5050's Citizen Girl campaign. I thank all the members who signed the motion to make that possible and look forward to hearing contributions from across the chamber. I'd like to acknowledge some visitors in the gallery. We have Carolyn and Talit from the 5050 campaign. And along with Mary, we have Girl Guiding representatives from Edinburgh, from Stirling, from Graham Day's constituency in Angus. We have Girl Guiding representatives from Queen's Ferry and Girl Guiding Young Spokeswomen. Presiding officer, I'd like to say to our visitors and to all girls and young women like them, this is your parliament and politics is for you. You're powerful and you're important and your voices, ideas and opinions matter. Citizen Girl is a campaign led by two fantastic partners and champions of girls and women, Girl Guiding Scotland and the 5050 campaign. In this year of young people and 100th year since the first women got the vote, Citizen Girl is about ensuring that the 50,000 or so girl guides in Scotland know that their voices matter and know how they can speak up, how they can campaign and how they can take action on things that are important to them. Citizen Girl is also about calling for real and meaningful change to ensure that today's girls and women can look forward to a more equal future. Research from Girl Guiding Girls Attitude Survey 2018 backs up why this campaign is important by highlighting the impact a lack of female representation has on the views and experiences of girls and young women. 57% of girls aged 11 to 21 don't think politicians understand the issues facing them today. And 53% think political parties should make sure half of their politicians are women. To tackle underrepresentation in politics, at the same time as dismantling structural barriers in their way, we need girls to see that politics is for them. We have a woman as first minister and a, pri a female prime minister, but there's no getting away from the fact that women remain stubbornly underrepresented in politics and in public life. Women make up 52% of the population, but only 35% of MSPs, 25% of local councillors, and 16% of council leaders. It's fair to say that there still aren't enough of us in the room. And it's really hard to be what you can't see. So for those of us that are here, we have to do everything in our power to remedy that. It's not enough just to get here ourselves. We have to take the lead and we have to be powerful persuasive, tenacious and strong advocates for change in this chamber, in our own political parties and in our communities. Women and girls, and in particular I think young women and girls, face sexism and objectification at frankly horrific levels these days. And even our First Minister and Prime Minister don't escape that. At a time when they were meeting to negotiate significant, important business to our countries, a newspaper thought it was okay to run a front page splash, focusing on their legs, not their views, not their political positions, but a part of their body. This sends a really poor message to young women and girls. I think things are actually worse than when I was a young woman, not better. And in 2018, when we're making such strides to equality, it's completely unacceptable. The online abuse faced by any woman who puts her head above the parapet can also seem quite terrifying and I can understand why that would be off-putting for many. It's designed to keep you down, to make you feel unimportant and like you have no business in politics. I know firsthand that it's not always easy, but girls, we can't let them win. Simply, we mustn't accept it. Block, mute, unfollow, unfriend. Your voice is too important to be silenced. Here's the good news though. If you surround yourself with brilliant friends, with supporters, with allies, with people who value you, even if they disagree with you, 
If you find a mentor and learn from them, and they'll learn from you too, you will do it. And each time you speak out, it gets a little less scary. And the voices of folk who would do you down feel a little less important. Stick together and you will be unstoppable. Presiding officer, in closing, I'd like to remind colleagues whether they're contributing to the debate tonight or not of a couple of ways that they can get involved. Parliamentarians and councillors can show their support by doing something that I know we all love doing, taking a photo of themselves, taking a selfie, um, with the Citizen Girl sign and endorsing the campaign online through their social media channels. I know that Girl Guiding Scotland um, members in their constituency would be delighted also to meet with them and to show some of the great work that's going on. I understand um, Daniel Johnston has experienced that and received a gift of a pink cape, which I was quite intrigued to learn about. I've not seen him wear it yet, but these are the sort of things you can experience. <laughs> on the centenary of some women getting the vote this year of the young people, 50,000 girls and young women growing in confidence, reaching for the stars, having fun and being a powerful force for good seems just about perfect for me. I'll say it again, presiding officer, politics is for you. Your voices are important. Go for it, girls. You'll be awesome. Thank you. And as always, can I gently say to uh, those in the public gallery that applause, although I understand why you're doing, is not permitted from the public area. I now call on Ash Denham to be followed by Alison Harris. Ms Denham, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and I'd like to start uh, my contribution to this debate by um, thanking Ruth Maguire for securing um, time in the Chamber today to debate this really important initiative. So, full disclosure, I was never a girl guide. I was a brownie, but not a girl guide. And I remember, it's quite a long time ago now, and I don't remember very much about it, but I do remember sewing uh, the badges onto my uniform when I um, achieved a new badge, which I always found very exciting. And I remember going away to camp as well, but that's about all I can remember. Um, and through the brownies and through girl guiding, whichever you've been a part of, girls are enabled in learning and working together to develop skills and to grow their independence, which is obviously always a good thing. And the story of the girl guides illustrates this very well. So gate crashing, the first rally of the Boy Scouts, girl scouts demanded something for the girls, refusing to believe that scouting was just for boys. And out of this direct and collective action, the girl guides were established. And we can also look um, close to here, Edinburgh, quite a while ago now though, the Edinburgh Seven, trailblazers for the rights of women to practice medicine, and this was in the 1870s, and their campaign resulted in legislation that allowed women to qualify as doctors in the UK and in Ireland. So as we celebrate the 100th anniversary of um, the first women gaining the right to vote, we can see both how far we've come in that time, but we can also recognise, I think, how much we still have to do. A more recent example of things that the Girl Guides have been doing was they supported um, the campaign to end page three, um, which finally, through pressure, came to an end in 2015. And that's why I'm delighted to see the Citizen Girl Initiative encouraging girls and young women to use their voices to enact change in Scotland to encourage them to become directly involved in changing the world around them, encouraging them to know their place, indeed, a place in the science lab, a place in the editorial office, the boardroom, or perhaps especially a place in this chamber. By telling girls and young women that their place is wherever they want it to be can sometimes ring a little bit hollow when this chamber in 2018 is still only 35% female. And that's why I think it's crucial that all political parties commit to a 50-50 split for candidates that they stand in elections. So um, some people here may know, but the SNP brought in gender balancing mechanisms for candidates for the 2016 elections. Um, it certainly wasn't universally accepted. There were many people in, in the party who didn't think it was a good idea. But I think the results certainly speak for themselves. In the, the SNP group in the chamber went from 27% female to 42% female. That is a huge step forward. And you know, it shows these measures really work. 
So I would encourage any parties that are in this um, chamber who don't currently have any gender balancing mechanisms to really look at this and consider it, um, I think, as a matter of urgency. But in closing as well, I note that the Girl Guys, one of their aims is to build confidence in girls and to raise expectations. And as someone who felt lacking in confidence at times when I was a girl and also when I was a young woman, and I just share this in case it's helpful to anyone else, I've learned that confidence comes through doing. So join that club, join that political party, say yes to giving that speech, run for election in student politics. And yes, giving that first speech is really scary, but the next time it gets that little bit easier and so on and so on, confidence builds up. So I would congratulate Girl Guides and Women 5050 on the Citizen Girl Initiative, and I look forward very much to seeing what you will achieve together. Thank you very much. I now call Alison Harris to be followed by Rhoda Grant. Ms Harris, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Oh, is that on? Sorry. Um, it's my pleasure to speak in this evening's debate, and when you think 100 years after some women were first given the right to vote and stand for election, we are still underrepresented in many areas of our political and business life. The number of women serving on our councils and in our two parliaments is still far below the equal balance that we should all be seeking to aspire to, and I join others in welcoming any initiative that highlights that politics needs more women, and especially young women. So, Deputy Presiding Officer, it is particularly good that tonight we are celebrating the Citizen Girl Initiative. Good and also very appropriate that in this year of young people, one of our largest and most respected young persons organisations, Girl Guiding Scotland, is highlighting the empowerment of women to show that the voice of a young woman does matter and to encourage them to use that voice in all walks of life. Young people are the future of our country. And of course, we need to encourage every person to play a part in civic life. But we do have to acknowledge that with, young, with women, and young women in particular, there are still unnecessary hurdles, real and perceived, that are still waiting to be removed. And this initiative will play a part in that. Despite the fact that we've had two female prime ministers and currently two women serving in this parliament as both first minister and leader of the opposition, it is obvious that work still needs to be done to bring more women into public life. Political parties may have different approaches on the best way to achieve this, and we may disagree in some areas. But one thing that we are united on is the belief that a parliament needs to look at the, the, look at the country that it represents, and hence the balance of genders in both our parliaments is something we need to strive for. Within my own party, we welcome the launch of Women to Win, and they are, they are leading the campaign to elect more Conservative women to Parliament. Women to Win aims to increase the number of Conservative women in Parliament and in public life, and is committed to identifying, training and mentoring female candidates for office. As MSPs, we regularly go into schools and discuss politics. We tell the pupils about how it is to be an MSP. We answer questions. But these questions often reveal the perception and stereotyping that this initiative sets out to challenge. So whilst we can all play our own part in convincing others to follow in our tracks, it is great to have an organisation such as Girl Guiding trumpeting the same message that whether in politics, business, the media, opportunities are there for women to play an important role and to make their mark. Opportunities for them to learn to play a part not only in political life, but in business and the media as well. We need to encourage more young women to realise their own potential. Women remain hopefully, woefully sorry, underrepresented in senior management roles and on the boards of public companies, where only 28% of board positions of the FTSE 100 companies are women. And whilst there has been an improvement over the years, there is obviously still much more needing to be done. Deputy Presiding Officer, Though never complacent, I do want to finish on a positive note. In 1998, Mary Pitt Caithley became the first woman to hold the post of Chief Executive of a Scottish local authority. This local authority was actually my own constituency of Falkirk. This month, over two decades after she blazed the trail for women at the top level of government, Mary retires from that post. 
However, she leaves knowing that amongst the ranks of the chief executives of Scottish councils, there is almost an equal gender split. I would like to congratulate Girl Guiding Scotland on their campaign and my colleague Ruth Maguire for bringing this debate forward tonight. And thank you very much, Deputy Presiding Officer. Thank you. thank you very much. I call Rhoda Grant to be followed by Alison Johnson. Ms Grant, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I would also like to congratulate Ruth Maguire on bringing forward this debate. And I'd like to pay tribute to Girl Guiding Scotland and Women 5050 for starting the Citizen Girl campaign. It's very important that we encourage girls to put themselves for forward to become future leaders. While our society instinctively does this with boys, girls are often left behind. We legislate for equality, but we also need to understand understand that societal norms still promote in inequality and they're deeply ingrained. From a young age, girls are given messages about being homemakers, mothers and carers. And you just need to look at children's toys. The next time you're in a shop, take a look at the toys that are meant for boys. They will be the blue ones. And toys meant for girls, they will be the pink ones. And see how we brainwash children onto take, into taking those roles. I've struggled trying to buy toys that do not gender stereotype children, and this surely cannot be right. It needs to stop. How can we say to girls, they can be leaders when everything else they see and hear tells them they cannot? To counteract this, we need to empower girls, and that's what this campaign's doing. And while they have their work cut out, given the societal stereotyping which tells girls that leadership roles are not for them, the activities that Citizens Girl, Citizen Girl is carrying out will help to build leaders for the future, learning about politics, how they can become legislators and politicians, meeting with councillors, MSPs and MPs. While working to empower girls, the campaign also calls on change for, for, from today's leaders. It calls on political parties to put forward a list of candidates that is gender balanced. And I'm proud that the Scottish Labour Party has gender balance in this parliament, but that has taken positive action on our part to do this. The campaign also calls on politicians to ensure that young people are, are consulted on decisions impacting on them. And I would argue that young people should be consulted more widely than that because they will inherit what we have put in place. And while they maybe lack life experience, they should have a say on the direction they travel. And that uh, lack of knowledge of lack of life experience can often make young people idealistic. But sometimes we lack that in modern day politics. We need to aspire as much as we need to manage. The campaign also calls for increased female representation in all walks of life. If female representation is increased, this will give girls role models, not just in politics, but in everyday career choices. There should be no barriers to what a girl or a woman can aspire to. Girl need, girls need these role models to be able to see, see themselves and own the role as leaders going forward. If all they see is men in suits, they immediately discount that role for themselves. They don't identify themselves with that person. In the Girl Guiding briefing for this debate, I think the one thing that really struck me as the most devastating was the information that at the age of be, age between seven and 10, 86% of girls thought they could be successful in their chosen career. That fell to 35% between the ages of 17 and 21, this group believing that employers preferred to hire men. What on earth happens to girls as they grow up? Why do young girls have the ambition and an outlook and why is this then destroyed? Is this the reality they face? Our aim must be to ensure that opportunities are there for girls to be what they want to be. They should be encouraged as they get older, not discouraged. And that, I believe, is a task for us all. I'm glad that Girl Guiding and Women 5050 have taken this on and I hope they will continue to work with young girls and with today's leader to make sure that we really do change the world for girls and the next generation of women. Thank you very much. I call Alison Johnson, followed by Gillian Martin. Ms Johnson, please. Thank you, presiding officer. I too thank Ruth Maguire for securing this debate. And for full disclosure, I was a brownie, 
I was also a former girl guide, um, but as it was only yesterday, I remember it very well indeed. Um, I, I'm also a proud co-founder of Women 5050 and part of the campaign to increase the representation of women in political life. Um, I've said it before and I'll say it again as a councillor in Edinburgh and as an MSP representing Lothian. It's notable that when schools, nurseries, hospitals are under threat, when there are big issues to be debated, my surgeries and meetings are full of women. Absolutely full of women. Often the majority are women. But when it comes to making votes, where are the women? They're absent in this chamber. They're absent across our town halls in the numbers that they should be there in. So we have got to take action and I'm really you know, so proud that, that Women 50 of 50 have linked up with Girl Guiding Scotland. Um, I, I just really wish that, that this had been an in initiative that was available when I was a girl guide. I didn't get involved in, in politics until my 30s and I think this is something that will help young women engage and it will give them the courage and confidence to do so. And I should say that in my first ever council meeting, I will always remember that a senior male councillor referred across the chamber to a senior woman councillor as a fishwife. Now, that attitude, that, that would be absolutely unacceptable today. So change is underway, but in no doubt that that change is, is due to the campaigning that has been going on in recent days. And I think this is a really important step in the right direction. I think the Girl Guiding Girls Attitude Survey shows us exactly why the Citizen Girl Initiative matters. More than half of girls and young women feel that gender stereotypes have got a limiting effect um, on the activities they can do now um, and how they can express themselves. And they feel the influence of those stereotypes in most areas of their lives, from teachers' beliefs and expectations to messages in the media. Um, I should say my, my own, one of the least ex pleasant experiences I've had on social media was when I dared to speak in the No More Page 3 debate. Um, so I think it's really important that we continue to challenge those who would like us to be quiet and speak up loudly. 57% of girls and young women we hear, aged 11 to 21, don't think politicians understand the issues facing them today. Um, it's clear that we have to get better at listening and make sure we're engaging fully. Citizen Girl helps girls and young women to learn about the political process, to help amplify their voices and realise how they can make changes happen. And as part of this, one of the outcomes Citizen Girl is calling for is for politicians at all levels to consult with young people on all the decisions that impact their lives. I think it's fair to say that we don't do that well enough. The year of young people in Scotland should be a real impetus to change that and make sure that we incorporate young people's perspectives from all backgrounds in the decisions we take. I think the resources developed for the Citizen Girl initiative give young people a great starting point in terms of understanding what the responsibilities of councillors, MSPs and MPs are and the kind of issues they can help with and actions young people can take from sending an email to starting a petition, organising events, raising funds for a cause they believe in. There's no substitute for political engagement and I'm delighted to support this campaign which encourages young women and girls to become directly involved in politics. Um, uh, to really change the conversations we're having about representation of women in society, we have to think about what opportunities women have to develop careers in the media or even to be as re represented as an expert in the media because the media influences the debate. Last year, the BBC launched its Expert Women Initiative, looking for women who'd like to contribute to news content as experts. So this acknowledged that the vast majority of voices we hear on the radio and TV are male. And in some ways, it's a welcome step to redress that balance. But the initiative was criticised, and rightly in my view, because it required interested women to submit a CV and a short film showing them present on their area of expertise, and then to pitch an idea for a story the general public would find interesting. Why should women and not men be required to prove their expertise in this way? Why is their specialist knowledge in doubt until proven? Why should interested women have to do so much unpaid labour to generate contacts for media organisations? Um, you know, a real bugbear of mine is the absolute lack of visibility of women in sport. Look at the back pages of your newspaper today. You'll be hard pressed to find a woman in there. You might if she's, you know, some sportsman's girlfriend. 
Um, but we must do better. And I met with a newspaper to discuss this lack of coverage of women sports role models. And, and I was asked to do that very same thing. Could I contact them when I had details of a successful woman or pitch a story to them? Do we really think that happens with, with male sports you know, events and efforts? And in many cases, those achievements of women are at a higher level. Presiding officer, I know that you'd like me to, to close. Um, I, I'm pleased to do so. I very much hope that Citizen Girl and initiatives like it fill young women with the confidence to act on, issue, on the issues they care about now and to play an ever fuller part in public life as they grow older. Thank you. If I had more time, uh, you could have gone on for 10 minutes, but I don't. Uh, I call uh, Gillian Martin to be followed by Rachel Hamilton. Ms Hamilton will be the last speaker in the open debate. Ms Martin, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and thank you to Ruth Maguire for getting this debate into the Chamber. Um, the Girl Guides have certainly come a long way, and last night as I was thinking about this debate, I had a wee smile to myself as I thought about the badges that were sewn onto my guide uniform, and I remembered one with a picture of an iron on it, which was the laundress badge. Uh, this, um, I wasn't, I wasn't a, a girl guide in the Victorian era. <laughs> it was only in the 1980s. So I was taught how to wash and iron clothes. And don't get me wrong, I've used those skills. And I still know how to get chewing gum off a jumper. But um, despite the wry smile I, I had about thinking about that quite old-fashioned achievement that I did at Girl Guides, I gave myself a bit of a telling off. Because I remember also how empowering the guides have always been and how being a girl guide for seven years empowered me. And it's obvious that they should join with women 50-50 in leading the charge for the empowerment of the next generation of female representatives. The girl guides taught me how to be independent, how to lead a group of other girls and take responsibility for them. And most memorably, they, they taught this formerly quiet and shy girl, yes, I was a formerly quiet and shy girl, to use her voice without fear, because that voice was always there. It just needed the right conditions to come out. Um, my parents still tell the story of how open-mouthed they were to turn up at the first Newbury Guide concert, not to find their awkward, shy girl at the back dressed as a tree or something, but as an exuberant, confident MC for the evening, kind of like a 12-year-old Doric Liza Minnelli. Um, and my former guide leader, Pat Begg, hadn't told them beforehand because she wanted to see their faces. And I want to thank Pat Begg for that. The guides gave me the space to find out that I could stand up in front of a crowded hall. And they're largely to be either thanked or blamed, depending on your perspective, for me standing up in this room now. I've spoken many times on the empowering nature of women, only spaces. And the girl guides have been that for decades. And I'm 100% behind the three asks of the Citizen Girl campaign. The ask of 50% of election candidates to be female, yes, yes, and yes again. But as the campaign recognises, we'll never get to that stage without early work with girls to ready their aspirations and confidence to look upon candidacy as an option. And I say that as someone who spent a great deal of last winter cajoling excellent but reluctant women into going forward for council candidacy. Women who are now elected and making a difference in their local communities and are refreshing a rather stale uh, council group. I'm sorry for anyone who takes offence at that, but it's true. Those who know me will know that I'm a strong advocate for the increase of female representation in management and boards and um, have been at both an MSP and in my working life before the election. And this week I'm writing to every Girl Guide group in my constituency to offer to come and meet with them to discuss their work, that work that they're doing and, 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 and the, their work on these issues. And it's not easy when most Girl Guide uh, sessions are held when I'm 160 miles away in Edinburgh midweek, but we'll work something out and maybe I'll be able to work out how to get some of Aberdeenshire East Guides into the gallery where so many of the fellow guides are today. As for your voices, well, they are stronger than ever. The closed focus group discussion on sexual harassment and bullying I joined courtesy of an invitation from the convener of the Equality and Human Rights Committee, Christina McKelvey, features some of the most engaging, persuasive and assertive voices that I have heard in this place. And they were the voices of girl guides. 
And the Girl Guides work alongside those of us who are campaigning quite successfully, I might add, to take down the barriers to period products is absolutely inspiring. I saw your new uh, End Period Poverty badge online this week and I have to say, I wish I'd been able to sew that on instead of the laundress one all those years ago. And that just shows us how far we've come in overturning stigma and recognising the powerful voices of girls and young women and what a force to be reckoned with the Girl Guides continue to be. That badge and this campaign are proof. The Girl Guides aren't just moving with the times, they're leading the change of the times. And I can't wait to be watching a debate in this cham chamber and hear a new female MSP stand up and say it was Citizen Girl that inspired them to go for election. Thank you very much. I call Rachel Hamilton. Miss Hamilton, please. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. I'm going to try and do a Minister Michael Curry and uh, do, use my tablet uh, like he did the sermon at the Royal Wedding. So I'm going to try and be modern. Um, and uh, I apologise also to Rhoda for Grant for wearing uh, pink. And I love pink. But, uh, I welcome, I really welcome this debate and I thank my colleague Ruth Maguire for securing it tonight. As a former Girl Guide myself, I'm a proud, proud to be associated with the Citizen Girl uh, campaign, which aims to bring voices together and to become the next generation of leaders in politics. And together, our voice is louder and it is stronger. And by bringing debates like this to Parliament, we can knock down those barriers that women and young girls face. 100 years ago, not all, but some women got the right to vote for the first time. And this is fitting because 2018 is also the year of young people. Women have come so far, but are we truly equal? It, isn't it staggering that in 2018, women still battle against inequality and sexism and that the gender pay gap still exists? The Fawcett Society, a group which campaigns for equality, says that caring responsibilities can play a big part and women often care for young children or elderly relatives. And that does sometimes, as they say, hold them back. Um, it also means that women are likely to work in part-time roles, which often are lower paid or um, have fewer opportunities for pro progression. Under a Conservative government, I am proud that we have brought forward um, that UK um, companies must now uh, publish the gender pay gap for those employing more than 250 people. But when it comes to equality in politics, the Conservative Party do have an outstanding leadership record. However, we do acknowledge that we have a steep hill to climb and our party is ready to work towards greater diversity and gender equality. And in Scotland, as my colleague Alison Harris said, we have set up a group of women to win um, with the objective of attracting more female ca candidates to step forward, coining the phrase on social media, hashtag ask her to stand. And through engagement with, with women groups, we want to identify, recruit, train, mentor, support and advance women into elected positions at all levels of parliament and local government. Minority groups and women will experience different journeys into politics and there isn't really a standard approach. What we aim to do is give individuals confidence by mentoring, training and also giving support. As well as this, Baroness uh, Nashina Mubarak is heading up a commission to ensure greater gender and ethnic diversity in the party's ranks at the next Holyrood election. And if we want to be the next government, we need to demonstrate uh, diversity, uh, uh, greater diversity. I represent a Borders constituency and was recently invited to join a Women in Leadership event organised by the principal, and she of course is a woman. Every woman was asked to bring a young person to that event and we were asked to join together to agree common goals and make commitments such as pledging uh, to mentor a young woman. Crucial to involvement is the involvement of young girls and girl guiding plays an important role to encourage young females to speak up to speak out and to be heard. And of course, that means politicians have to listen to those young female voices. The Girls' Attitude Survey revealed that 55% of girls aged 7 to 21 say gender stereotypes affect their ability to say what they think. And 57% of girls aged 11 to 21 don't think politicians understand the issues girls and young women face today. It's vital that politicians engage with those young voices and take note of what they have to say and also take action. That voice is threatened by online trolls, and often male, often chauvinistic, misogynistic, sexist and aggressive. And set to defeat those trolls that target female politicians and candidates, I'm working with other MSPs in this place to create a platform to combat these incidences of abuse and work with social media platforms to make sure their voices do not drown out our own. I, for one, 
as will my colleagues, continue to do all we can to support and encourage young women both in and outside of politics. And it's important to keep promoting female and young female voices. We need to give young women the confidence and the means to success in any role and in anything they want to do. And I thank those involved in the Citizen Girl campaign. And as a former Girl Guide, I pledge my support to you. Thank you. I now call on Angela Constance to close the Government Cabinet Secretary, please. Thank you very much, President Officer. I want to add my thanks to Ruth Maguire for securing this very important uh, members' business debate tonight. And I'd like to thank all members uh, for their contributions uh, tonight. Uh, Alison Johnson gave a complete and utter rant, which I enjoyed every minute of. And it was very interesting to hear the reflections from Rachel Hamilton, Ash Denham and Julian Martin uh, on their time uh, as girl guides. And it's at this point that I'm going to completely gloss over my very brief career uh, in the Girl Guides, the Brownies uh, and the Girls Brigade. I'm afraid I was not involved in either of these uh, organisations for long enough for reasons I won't go into to stay around and sew a badge on uh, any uniform. But it is uh, very uh, remarkable uh, to listen to how, no doubt, the organisation uh, Girl Guide in Scotland has changed over the years, but nonetheless, Julie Martin was able to speak very personally and powerful about how uh, her time as a girl guide uh, had helped her uh, blossom into you know, a confident uh, young girl and young woman. And on that note, I am really, really pleased to, to add my congratulations uh, on behalf of the Scottish Government to Girl Guide in Scotland and Women 5050 uh, on the launch of their Citizens uh, Girl campaign and extend a very uh, warm welcome uh, to our visitors in the gallery uh, to Parliament. This is, of course, uh, your Parliament and it's your Parliament as much as anybody else's uh, Parliament. I also want to start by thanking all of those involved with Girl Guide in Scotland who volunteer as of course Volunteers Week. Uh, volunteers uh, ensure that girls and young women can take part uh, in the, the guiding movement uh, and participate in activities such as uh, Citizens Girl and understand that over 2,000 uh, girls have completed or are currently working uh, on the Citizens Girl Challenge badge so far and that's quite a, a remarkable achievement. And as I've many colleagues have said, this is absolutely the right moment uh, for this initiative. For 100 years since some women uh, won the right to vote and to stand for election. Uh, and of course, it's Scotland's uh, year of young people, a year to celebrate young people's achievements and to say to them that your voices uh, are not just important, but they're absolutely central uh, to the future of this country. And I absolutely agree with the motion that the rights of women have advanced considerably over the last 100 years. And there is indeed a lot to celebrate, a lot to be proud of. But we must acknowledge that inequality it still exists. And Ruth McGuire it was quite right uh, to say that the business that we have to be in is the business of real, meaningful uh, and lasting change. And her contribution uh, struck a chord when she articulated that there are some things that are much better for women and girls today but like her, I also fear uh, that there are some things uh, that are worse. And of course, the objectification of women uh, and of course, the issues in and around uh, online abuse uh, are very uh, pertinent as well. And like Rhoda Grant, I was deeply struck by the fact that uh, girls between the age of seven and 10 years old um, were really hopeful and confident that they had the same chance of success. 86% of them uh, thought they could be up and at it on the same uh, level uh, as the, the, their male peers. And then when you ask the same question uh, to young girls and women between the ages of 17 and 21, that reduces to 35%. And like Rhoda Grant, it begs the question, what happens what are the knocks in life that are happening here? What is putting down uh, our girls and young women? What's suppressing them? And indeed, uh, what still oppresses them today? And it is quite clear that women's representation in parliament and local government and in other senior positions is not uh, where it should be. And it isn't enough to say that we're okay, we're here as women. We have to be thinking about the women that are missing, the women that are absent, and we need to be thinking uh, about the future of this country and the future generations of women that should be stepping into our shoes and indeed uh, stepping into the shoes uh, occupied uh, by some uh, you know, men as well. And we do have to take action to address this. It requires uh, action and uh, action and, and not just uh, words. And I was very struck 
At the end of uh, last month, the BBC ran a story online uh, highlighting the, the worst excuses given by FTSE 350 companies uh, for not appointing uh, women executives. And it was quite uh, depressing reasoning. We had uh, you know, the same old um, excuses and uh, mythologies that I don't think women would fit comfortably into the board environment. Uh, or the other uh, quote, there aren't that many women with the right credentials and depth of experience to sit on the board. The issues covered uh, are extremely complex. Complex. And there are a whole list uh, of, of excuses, one after the other. Even, well, we have one woman already on the board, so, so we're done. Uh, is it not somebody else's uh, turn? And when you read uh, that type of uh, commentary, it would make you think that it was actually 1918 and not uh, 2018. And for that reason, uh, I was very proud to work with others uh, across this parliament and to take through the Gender Representation uh, and Public Boards Act uh, last year. It is also saying, also really important that we acknowledge the fact that for some groups of women, progress is seriously slow and seriously lacking. We have to improve our understanding uh, of the particular experiences of women living with a disability and women from ethnic minority communities so that we can challenge uh, the very specific issues uh, they face. On a very basic level, uh, parliaments are meant to serve the people and if you look uh, on the one hand who makes up the people and on the other hand who serves them, if those two groups look pretty different and sound pretty different, uh, then there is something uh, quite clearly in my mind uh, that isn't uh, right. I think a really positive development uh, over the last uh, few years is extending the franchise in Scotland to 16, 17-year-olds. Uh, and I think this has given an interest and an energy uh, that young people have shown uh, for political uh, engagement. And giving young people the vote can, I believe, uh, pique their interest and keep them engaged in politics uh, throughout their life. And by empowering girls to, to use their voices and to see and feel the impact that they can have by doing so, Citizen Girls taps into this energy and it does so in a way that is fun uh, and is accessible uh, for young women and girls. And it also um, does so by what Ash Denham described by uh, growing uh, confidence through doing and giving young women the confidence to challenge and confidence uh, to change uh, the community uh, around them. I know, President Officer, that many Girl Guides units have visited this Parliament. I understand that currently the average is one unit visit uh, per week, uh, and I think that's uh, wonderful, and I really do commend uh, Girl Guide in Scotland, its local leaders and volunteers uh, for engaging in the Parliament this way. I am, I have to say, particularly intrigued by the concept of an edible Parliament. And I hope that members might get a chance to sample a bit of Parliament uh, as we've never seen it before. And if there was a competition to judge uh, these edible uh, Parliaments, I would certainly be uh, happy uh, to uh, ob oblige. Presiding officer, I want to end by once again thanking uh, Ruth Maguire for bringing this motion to Parliament. It is a great example uh, to send to young women and girls that their voices uh, can make a difference, their voices will make a difference, and that politics is indeed something uh, that they can get involved in. They can be uh, an MP, an MSP, local councillor, uh, a future prime minister uh, or first minister. But they can also use their voices in lots of different ways uh, to make um, a real difference. And on International Women's Day uh, this year, we held a debate where the focus was very much um, on young women and girls and we highlighted a number of examples where young women have just done that and made a huge uh, difference to their communities. The Glasgow girls being one example. And of course, Bessie Watson uh, is another, uh, often considered to be the youngest uh, suffragette. Uh, Bessie was also known for playing the bagpipes. She grew up in Edinburgh and she played her bagpipes at suffragette marches and rallies. And her parents were big supporters of the suffrage movement. And she even played outside the old uh, Cotton Hill jail to, to keep the spirits of the women uh, up who were being held there. And of course, we'll see the procession um, in Edinburgh uh, on Saturday as well, which will give another um, uh, uh, aspect to the, the celebration of the uh, 100 years of some women uh, getting the vote. So, Sidon Officer, once again, thank you very much to uh, Girl Guide in Scotland, Women 5050, Ruth McGuire, and other uh, colleagues who've contributed this evening. Thank you. And as one of the female Deputy Presiding Officers of the Parliament, that concludes the debate and I close this meeting of Parliament.